Thank you so much for coming to my office. Uh, as you are very much aware, our ministry deals with chieftaincy and religious affairs. And uh, since His Excellency the President Nana Rudanko Akufuado appointed me, uh, I have steered the affairs of this ministry for the past two and a half years. And I must say that even though it's been so challenging, but uh, we've made a lot of strides. Uh, on the part of the chieftaincy, we know very well that the constitution of this country gives the rights for the existence of chieftaincy in this country. And so uh, what the ministry does is to monitor and ensure that all the houses of chiefs uh, do the right thing according to the constitution and according to the chieftaincy act. So this is what we've been doing over the years. But the challenges that we have mostly have to do with chieftaincy disputes. Uh, and uh, it's been so enormous that even though we do a lot, but at the same time, more also come on. For example, um, when I came here as a minister, we had about 352 chieftaincy disputes. Uh, over the years, between two and a half years, we've been able to resolve over 140 chieftaincy disputes. And yet, still we have a figure a little bit over 300. So that means still there are more coming in. And uh, it calls for a lot of efforts. Uh, I want to thank most sincerely the presidents and the members of the various houses of chiefs, and most especially the, the, the president of the National House of Chiefs. They have done a lot for us to be able to chalk that success. And uh, we hope that uh, with more funding and resources, we'll be able to do much, much better. So on the chief taxi side, we've done so well. Uh, there are so many of them that we've done out of the 140 that are well known. For example, uh, uh, the Dagborn, Sebibi or so, and a whole lot of them. And uh, we are proud that we have a president who is a listening president and is ready to assist us so that we have peace in this country. The baseline of this country is chieftaincy. The people, everywhere you go to every town or village, you will find a chief there. And whenever there are issues, people will first even go to the chief before going to the police station. So when there's peace and uh, the chiefs carry their honor and dignity, then it ensures proper uh, peace and unity in the country. And that also makes government projects to succeed. Because so many times there are places where because of chieftaincy disputes, government is not able to pour resources there. And therefore the people don't get developed. And then things go very bad. So we are doing our best and we hope that we'll do better uh, come this year and next year. Now on the front of the religious bodies, uh, we are very much in touch with uh, uh, all the religious bodies, the Christian Council, Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. We are very much in touch with them so that we can be able again to bring harmony to this country. Uh, even though there are also a lot of challenges. Uh, for example, there are some pastors who don't behave well. Uh, there are other uh, churches who do things uh, that go against the law. But every pastor or every church is supposed to register their church at the various district assemblies and the municipal assemblies and so on and so forth. So that the district assemblies, the MMDCs are supposed to cross-check as to their activities. And any time uh, any church goes against the law or the bylaws of the MMDCs, those churches are supposed to be closed down. So that is the law. Uh, but at the same time, 
we also have all these uh, Christian bodies that, of course, do regulate the, the members of their churches to ensure that they do the proper things. So sometimes you might have some churches that are not registered. Whenever they come here, we advise them to go and register with the, those existing uh, uh, churches or those existing religious bodies so that they can also be regulated. If they don't do that, then of course the law will catch up with them. So this is very important. Now also we tried as much as possible to bring up what we term the pilgrimage. For so many years, a lot of uh, Ghanaian Christians have been yearning to go on pilgrimage to the state of Israel. And uh, this started a long time ago, but uh, it's not been successful. But I want to assure you, and I'm very proud, together with the team that I have here, the, the chief director and all the directors and the workers here, we've been able to come up with a proper plan for pilgrimage to the state of Israel and other countries like Italy. What have we done? What we've done is that this ministry has set up a planning committee that plans pilgrimage every year and announces the dates for pilgrimage and ensure that all the people who want to go on pilgrimage abide by certain rules according to the forms that we have developed. Two, we have also instituted a screening committee that screens everybody. Anybody who wants to undertake a pilgrimage and comes through here uh, is screened to ensure that that person is going only for his faith uh, and to increase his spiritual awareness in the, in the land of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And so we started it in 2017. We had about 50 people going. 2018, we have about 200 people going. And 2019, we are having more than 300 people going. It simply means that we are succeeding. And the good news is that all those people who went came back because there are many, many uh, companies in town who try to engage in these pilgrimages only for the people to go there, seek asylum, and do all kinds of things. No, this ministry is to ensure that people go there solely for their uh, religious awareness and, uh, and, uh, and praise to God. So this is what we do over here. Very well. Uh, I believe strongly that when it comes to chieftaincy disputes, it is only the chiefs themselves who can bring about the resolution of their disputes. So if you look at Dagbon chieftaincy, for example, uh, it is being headed by the eminent chiefs, uh, of which Utunfo is their chairman. And out of that, we were able to resolve the chieftaincy issues in Dagbon peacefully. Uh, there are also other chieftaincy disputes, like that of Teshi, that of uh, Pram Pram, and a host of lots. All those chieftaincy issues were resolved by the judicial committees of the houses. So when it happens like that, of course, nobody will blame government that is playing politics with chieftaincy. No way. So that is the firm mechanism that I believe strongly that if we abide by that and respect the houses of chiefs, and let the chiefs resolve their issues through their judicial committees, then of course, we'll be able to have a, a better resolution to their matters. It is that many, many people who have taken chieftaincy disputes to the courts have been referred to the various traditional councils and the regional house of chiefs. Because the system is there. At the traditional council, there's a judicial committee 
which resolves matters. If you are not satisfied, then you appeal at the regional house of chiefs. If you are not satisfied, then you appeal at the national house of chiefs. If you are not satisfied, before it goes to the Supreme Court. So, uh, matters purely uh, based on chieftaincy are to be resolved by this mechanism. So, I am happy that most of the courts now have realized that it is better not to entertain such chieftaincy cases, but to refer them to the various uh, statutory bodies that deal with chieftaincy. We can see it practically uh, that the, most of the courts now are referring the cases to the various House of Chiefs, you know, to be resolved. So it's a, a good feather in our cap and it's very, very important that people get to know that they cannot solve their disputes, uh, which are mostly chieftaincy, at the courts. People might go there, take mandamus, and, but it never works out. So, but if the chiefs sit on the matter and they are able to resolve it, it's rather a very lasting one, uh, other than the courts. So, this is very, very, uh, something that is very good. The base of our society dwells on chieftaincy. You go to every village or every town in any of this country, and in all the, I mean, wherever you can find any village in this country, you, you will see a chief there. And when it comes to matters uh, that are based on development, matters based on conflict, and all that, you will see that the point or the person who, the focal point of all those matters are in the palace. So it's, it means that if the chief is able to understand his, uh, is able to understand that he controls a lot on the ground, I believe strongly that uh, a lot of things can be done. And as I said, nobody, no, government can succeed if the chief does not believe in the development. If the chief, once the chief takes up the fact that you can develop his area and he believes in it, then it will be accepted by the people. So chiefs stand a lot to, for us to gain as a government. And that is why the president is very much concerned about all the disputes in this country and is assisting the ministry to ensure that we resolve most of them. You know, chiefs are part of the local governance and that is enshrined also in our laws that for the district assemblies, 30% or so or some members of the these assemblies are supposed to be chiefs of that area. So meaning that the law has taken care of chiefs even at the district assemblies. So that also means that the chiefs know that they are part and parcel of local governance without the chiefs, so therefore the assembly cannot be complete. So we understand that and we know that using the chiefs to develop the area is a very important tool for government. And uh, you cannot go to a place and reject the chief. And then, of course, nothing happens in that area. <laughs> Absolutely. So we, as a government, we know and we, we, we trust that if we believe in the chiefs and give them the resources and take care of them and allow their system of adjudication, then, of course, government will have peace and harmony so that our programs and activities can be successful and then the people of this country can also enjoy it. So it is very important that we take care of the chiefs, yes. And that is why every, um, all the houses of chiefs, uh, government takes care of them, gets them their uh, vehicles to work, 
give some allowances and some assistance and then there's a registrar uh, at the House of Chiefs and the traditional councils. There's also uh, a council. There's always a lawyer uh, for every House of Chiefs so that in their deliberations they can also be guided by the law. So at the end of it all, uh, when they come out with uh, an adjudication or when they come out with a report, you can find out that it is very concrete and it works for all of us. Yes. By the law, every region is supposed to have a regional house of chiefs. So once a new region is created, then it behoves of government, especially the ministry, to ensure that a House of Chiefs is established for that region. So now we have six regions, and therefore the ministry is working very hard to ensure that uh, those Houses of Chiefs are established. How do we do that? Uh, it means that now a new ally will have to come out, you know, to redefine where every chief belongs. If you take Brown Hafu, for example, now I think three regions are carved out of it, and then the northern region. So uh, a new ally is being prepared uh, to be sent to parliament to be endorsed so that we can have those members of the house accepted by the region. Once parliament passes the ally, then of course we will go to the various regions and then uh, institute the House of Chiefs according to the members that are in the new ally. So that means that some chiefs that belong to the old uh, regions will now find themselves in a new region entirely. And then once they are constituted, that means they will have to meet and decide on who is going to be their president and the vice president and so on and so forth. So we are working on it. Uh, we have received the final draft and uh, we'll be sending it to parliament very soon. And uh, just after that, uh, the ministry will be engaged in going up and down, making sure that those houses are properly constituted. Yes, of course, because when the regions were being created and the day they were receiving their CIs, you saw that it was the chiefs who came to receive the CIs. So they know very well. And there was a referendum on which all the chiefs were engaged, they were involved. So they know very, very well what they are doing. And the interesting thing is that now that the new regions have been created, every chief knows exactly where he belongs. But for now, because we have not yet uh, constituted those new members, so they are still in the old regions until such is done. So they understand the system very well. And I can tell you, if you want some of the best brains and some of the best, most educated people in this country, you'll find them with the chiefs. <laughs> it's very, very important, yeah. You see them there, professors, doctors, whatever. Yes, they are there. Even though there are religious organizations and religious bodies that try to control uh, their various members, but then it is very, very important that in this country we have a national policy that will guide religion. Not only that, we have a policy that will also allow all the religious bodies to understand where we want to go, where we are coming from and where we want to go. So we have been mandated by cabinet to come up with a national policy on religion. Uh, and that is also something which is very challenging. But I can tell you now, and I'm happy to announce that we are almost getting to the end of it. Once you draw the proposals for national policy on religion, you have to call the stakeholders 
So we are now in the process of calling all the stakeholders also to come in, uh, look at it, you know, debate on certain items within the policy. And once it's accepted by all, we'll go back and present it to cabinet. And that will be the national policy of religion for this country. So that nobody can go about worshipping or doing anything that does not go uh, in tandem with the policy. We are not saying that we are stopping people from worshipping what they want. No. And if we are talking about national policy, national policy of religion also uh, takes care of all religions, not only Christianity nor Islam. Both traditional religion and any other religion. I hear there are Buddhists also in Ghana here, and there are uh, a whole lot, uh, a kanka and so on and so forth. So the policy guides everybody as to how to harmonize religion with governance and peace in this country. It's very, very important. It does not limit people from uh, believing in what they think but it is something that guides all the religious bodies and all Christians of this country as to how we want to worship our uh, gods. Every year, we bring all uh, religious bodies together and tell them what the government wants, what this country wants, and they will be guided also by the national policy to ensure that they live in harmony. Nobody, there was once a case in the Kumasi somewhere, and you know, the security people were on top of their jobs, otherwise there will be chaos. So we don't want to take that peace for granted. And that is why the ministry is doing everything possible to ensure that we engage all of them in the interfaith dialogue so that everybody will understand how it is to be a, a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist in Ghana. If that happens, then of course, we'll have the peace that we are all looking for. So we are doing that. Uh, we did it last year and this year we'll be doing it and 2020 we'll be doing it. Every year we'll do it and it's very important. Every nation is defined by its culture, custom and tradition. And you can see that uh, if you look at the chieftaincy side, the chiefs are the ones who embody culture and tradition. Also, if you look at the religious body side, people understand how we worship our gods in this country. So it is very, very important that people outside this country tend to understand who is a Ghanaian. What does it do? What does it believe in? How does it live? Before they would like to do a business with us. So it is our mandate to fight hard to sell ourselves to the outside world so that nobody will look at Ghana as a place where uh, maybe if you come here, you can't live here. By exposing our culture and tradition and customs. Uh, last year we were in Dubai. Even this year, I was in Germany. Uh, on a Kente festival. And many people come here, a lot of Germans come to Ghana, and they just look at Kente, but they do not understand even the colors. They don't understand how come a certain Kente is supposed to be worn at a certain time or at a certain fashion. So those things, we have to expose them to the people. We have to expose them outside. Once they get to know who we are, what we are, and what we worship, I'm very sure that they will be more tending to work with us and to trade with us and to come to us for business. So uh, even though we are not directly engaged uh, uh, in trying to promote business, but of course we are engaged in promoting our culture to enhance business in this country. So those development chiefs 
as I said, are, uh, uh, are doing very well. Most of them try to help the community and most of them also go to showcase our uh, custom and tradition outside. And as I speak to you, there are so many foreigners who are, into this, who are in this country uh, of the year of return. And uh, most of them were being attracted here because they have seen other foreigners being installed as development chiefs. They have come to live here and so and so forth. And it tells the good story of Ghana that foreigners can come and live here in peace as far as uh, they live by our laws. So it is a very, very good uh, thing in that aspect. And I will encourage most of the chiefs to look around uh, their areas and see those people who deserve to have that honor. And let me say like this, a development chief is not only for foreigners, also Ghanaians. Depending upon what you do in your community, uh, you can be installed a development chief. So that is where it is. And let me also say that uh, the year of return has brought many people uh, to this country. And also Ghanaians need to know that all this chieftaincy, custom, this, that, that, is all coming out of this ministry. And so if they want to contact us, as we said, we have a website www.mcra that is Ministry of Chieftains and Religious Affairs so www.mcra.gov.gh if you go on that website you'll get to know a lot about us